Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, a little bit different. I'm on my phone, I've not got my lav mic and my regular camera set up. Uh, but my brother texts me, his 2011 Outback has some issues, some CVT issues, so uh, we're gonna cut to a little cell phone video of me driving around talking about what issues it has and about what it's gonna cost him probably to repair it. If we do repair it, I'm not sure exactly what we're doing yet. So uh, check it out. All right, guys, pardon the audio and the mess and the camera quality. I'm on my phone right now. I'm in my brother's 2011 2.5i Limited Outback. Got a check engine light, brake light, cruise is in op, trash control is in op, and AT oil temperature is flashing. Uh, he had been complaining of issues of it stalling at a stop. That's typical of a torque converter clutch. Uh, failure. We've done a torque converter replacement before on a 2010 model. Uh, 2010 and 2011 were uh, known for having this issue with their TR690 transmission with the CVT. Um, what we got now is a, I believe it's a P2760, can't remember, it's the one for the um, lockup solenoid, uh, which normally means it's time for a valve body replacement. Let me look real quick at the codes again. Sorry about the focus. Camera's wanting to be wonky. So we've got PO700, which is just a generic, something's wrong with the transmission, throw a malfunction light on uh, in both engine history and current. Transmission code there is 2764, lockup duty solenoid circuit low, normally indicates a failed solenoid and a time for replacement of a valve body, because you can't buy the solenoid separate from Subaru. Uh, so there we got the lockup duty solenoid circuit once again. I will go in, of course, and do the diagnostics, make sure that there's not an issue between the TCM and the wiring harness to the uh, to the transmission, but 99% of the time, uh, that's what it is, a valve body time. Uh, so we're in the transmission now. I'm about to drive it down the road. Uh, symptoms right now is when you first take off, it does jerk a bit. It's not like chain slip. It's like uh, the transmission is... Um, really low geared and then wants to buck and the whole car will buck uh and then he's telling me that it is stalling coming to a stop as i said earlier uh so we're gonna go through that at oil light is uh saying basically the transmission temperature when it's on solid normally that means you have overheated your transmission flashing like that normally just means that there is a issue with the transmission so we're gonna go into the data stream i'm gonna go into group two uh, transmission fluid, I just checked a minute ago, is about 180 degrees. Again, sorry about this stupid focus. Uh, so we're at 181, which is pretty much normal. Our engine speed, turbine speed is zero because I'm sitting here not moving. Uh, we're going to go down the road, look at the lockup solenoid and a few other metrics and uh, see if one we can get it to stall out at a stop to confirm that we do have a bad torque converter. And uh, we're going to see what the temperature does and see if we find any slippage. So about to take off here in just a second as soon as we get uh, clear traffic. I live out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like I'm out on uh, you know some major uh, interstate or something. I'm on a back country road. There we go. Oh, jerk taking off. I don't know if that came through on the camera, but uh, it did buck and uh, made the whole car go. Uh, acceleration now is pretty much normal for a 2.5 CVT at uh, medium pedal effort. Do hear a roar in the front end. I think he's got a wheel bearing going bad. Uh, he does have a cracked windshield he is not taken care of. Nope, that roaring is in the back. I believe we've got a bad wheel bearing in the rear, which is also common for this gen Outback and uh, the previous gen. Uh, so looking at everything, temperature seems normal. I don't really think we've got a mechanical issue. I think it's a failed solenoid in combination with that torque converter failure. Uh, in a minute, I'm gonna turn off on a really small back road that no one ever travels down and uh, get up about 40, 50 mile an hour and do a pretty aggressive stop and see if we can stall this engine out so you guys can see that. But man, there, that is a lot of noise I'm hearing from the rear. I don't know if it's coming through but definitely he's got a wheel bearing going or he's got a really badly out of balance tire or he's got a tire with damage to it. I haven't inspected the tires in uh, several months, actually maybe a year since the last time he brought it to me for service uh, for a rotation and an oil change. 
about 109,826 miles. I don't know why I had it in my head he was at about 230 or more. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the mileage. And you see we got Christmas tree lights going on right now. So about to pull off the highway, get on this little back road that's only about 35 mile an hour and uh, see if we can get this thing to act up. See if we can uh, catch this bucking uh, when I take off as well. Excuse me, this is a 25 mile an hour backcountry road. So, it didn't do it there. I think we've got to start from a dead stop. Let's stop dead. We took off fine that time. I am hearing a little bit of noise, a rotational noise. I don't know if it's something in the transmission. I'd heard years ago when I drove this car, what I thought was a main bearing starting to go out in the transmission. But um, I don't know. Between a $700 valve body and near $800 torque converter, uh, might be cheaper just to look for a salvage or reman TR690 for the money because I could go ahead and put a torque converter and a valve body in here and still have a mechanical failure with this transmission. Wouldn't really know until I got it all swapped out and uh, put about $200 worth of CVT fluid in it as well. So we're going about 40. Let's see if we can install her. Oh, did not stall that time. So pretty sporadic on the torque converter stalling. Let me see if I can get the uh, lockup to happen. I don't know if I was going fast enough. to get up to about 45 actually to get that to happen. Definitely hearing some noise from the transmission. Given the issue that's going on right now, this is probably the, the TCM is probably not going to lock the torque converter, so I'm probably not going to get the stall uh, from the torque converter not unlocking. Yeah, this thing is definitely making a crazy noise in the rear end. I hate to say it, and it's insane to say it, but this is an example of what happens when you do not take care of and maintain your Subaru. My brother basically just drives it, uh, goes way over for oil changes before he brings it to me and you know it's just late on services of all kinds i think he got it used at 160 170 thousand miles and uh the last 30 thousand 40 thousand miles of his ownership has been really rough yeah it's not going to stall now because uh due to the codes the uh, tcm is not locking the torque converter so if i cleared the codes and got it to lock it would probably stall out so i can pretty much rule that uh, torque converter has failed as well, or it is failing sporadically. So yeah, looks like uh, we got some hefty repair bills and things ahead for this car, or uh, I might get them to sell it to me cheap, I don't know. So as you see, not sure exactly what we're gonna do yet. Looks like it needs a valve body and a torque converter, and I suspect the head gaskets are slowly starting to go. I suspected that about 10,000 miles ago when I looked at it. Uh, so not exactly sure if uh, he's going to fix it, get something else, or if I'm going to buy it from him and uh, it be the next uh, project car. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.